Okay, so in this video, I'm going to solve some numerical examples. Uh, so let's start with the following. So let's suppose the initial endowment for agent A is uh, two apples, three bananas. For agent B, it's, uh, I don't know, four apples and then one bananas. And then the utility functions UA equals UB, which is equal to X times Y. All right, let's suppose. Um, so then the question, in the next video, I will calculate the, uh, the Predo set. I will find all Predo efficient allocations. But here, I'm going to make uh, several observations. So, so some sort of numerical examples, just to understand uh, what Predo efficiency means and what, uh, what, what it means an allocation is not Predo efficient. So here is some example is allocation uh, x, which is uh, 0, 0, and then uh, 6, 4. Pretty efficient. Okay. Well, the allocation says agent A gets uh, nothing, zero, zero, and agent B gets everything. Is it feasible? Yes, because the total number of good one is six, the total number of good two is four, so it is feasible, good. The second thing is, is there any allocation where uh, we can make, uh, I'm sorry, is, 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 is mutual gain from trade possible? Meaning, if they, make an exchange, um, and then both agents will be happier. At least one agent is strictly happier, and the other agent has at least the same utility. Well, this is impossible. Um, mutual gain from trade is not possible at this allocation x. Thus, x is Predo efficient. Okay? How do I know that? Well, I mean, think about it. The utility function is x times y. If you want to make agent A happier, which what we should do, uh, well, I mean, let's say we want to keep agent A the same level of utility, zero. All right? So don't give any x or y to this agent because... Um, well, we, we would like to keep his utility the same. I, I need to make agent B strictly happier then. But if I need, want to make agent B strictly happier, well, unfortunately, he's already getting everything and I can't give him more because it's going to be infeasible. So therefore, there's no way to make, keep agent A the same level of utility and be happier. All right. Can I make agent A happier? Well, in order to do that, in order to make agent A happier, because his initial utility is zero times zero, right? Utility of agent A at X is zero times zero. Utility of agent B at X is six times four, 24. Well, what's gonna happen is, I have to give agent A some epsilon uh, good one and some epsilon good two. Well, these are some positive numbers, right? Well, what does that mean? That means utility of agent A, therefore, is going to be under this new bundle, uh, is going to be, well, by the way, if I'm giving agent A epsilon 1 and agent, two, uh, a, uh, agent A epsilon 2 good 2, well, it means I am actually taking some of good 1 from agent A, a B, and give it to agent A. So the feasibility conditions, remember, so agent A is going to consume this many good one, and agent B is going to consume this many good two. All right? So what happens is that under this new allocation Y, I am basically trying to make agent A happier. In order to do this, this epsilon 1, epsilon 2 must be, or E1, E2, I don't know if you don't, if you don't want to call them epsilon, just call them E1, E2. I have to make them positive. But the feasibility con condition means, well, I have to subtract those from what initial, uh, what agent B is, 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 is having 
in uh, X because they're exchanging. Exchanging means if I'm getting something, you should be giving that thing because it, I'm not getting it uh, from Sky. All right, so agent A's utility is gonna be epsilon one times epsilon two. Agent B's utility under this new allocation is gonna be six minus epsilon one times four minus epsilon two. Okay. Whatever you do, as long as epsilon one and epsilon two is positive, well, yes, this is definitely greater than uh, utility of agent A when uh, he does not make any exchange. But this thing is definitely lower than utility of agent B uh, in X. All right, so whatever this epsilon one and epsilon two are, as long as they're positive, because this is a strictly increasing function, all right, um, well, it, um, because it's an increasing function, if you are subtracting something uh, from uh, agent A's initial con con consumption X, it means you're making agent B worse off. So therefore, there is no way we can find an allocation Y where both agents' utility are higher. At least one is the same, the other one is strictly higher. That's, that's impossible. And so mutual gain from trade is not possible, and hence it is proto-efficient. The confusing, I mean, the reason why I like to give this example is that uh, this allocation is clearly unfair because agent, one agent gets nothing, the other agent gets everything. Proto-efficiency has nothing to do with fairness, all right? Again, don't forget, proto-efficiency asks the following question. Is it possible that by exchanging the goods, these agents are going to mutually gain from trade. If the answer is no, it's not possible, well then this point is, I mean, this allocation is efficient. It's like they don't need to make any exchange. There is no win-win situation. If mutual gain from trade is possible, it means win-win situation is possible, but the current situation isn't win-win. All right, so therefore it's not efficient. Okay. So now uh, let's talk about, oh, this symmetrically, by the way, consider another allocation X prime where agent A gets everything and agent B gets nothing. Well, this is also Predo efficient, right? Symmetrically. Let's pick another allocation X double prime. Uh, well, because the utility function is this way, I will later calculate the Predo efficient set. So here is one example that I would like to give the initial endowment. Um, well, yeah, the initial endowment itself. W is W Predo efficient. So that's the question. Well, the answer is no, all right? I know it because I know uh, what the contract curve will look like. Uh, but for you, if you're seeing this question for the first time, no or yes is hard. So what you have to do, you have to try to come up with some why where both agents will be happier. If you cannot find such why, well, you can just say then, well, therefore it's not. Uh, possible to make both agents happier and hence it's proto efficient. So first try to easier try to prove that it is not proto efficient, all right? Because it's easier. So that means I have to come up with some allocation where both agents will get higher utility. Well, first of all, you have to calculate agent A and B's utility under the initial endowment, right? So under the initial endowment, agent A consumes two good one, three good two. So her utility is two times three, six, and agent B, four times one, four. So these are the initial utilities. The question is, can we increase A and B, the utility of A and B, by allowing them to exchange. Okay, so make a guess. For example, um, I would like to keep agent B's utility the same. Okay, I mean, 
So uh, therefore, consider the following. Uh, y is y b at least, 2 and 2, and therefore y a is the remaining. Remember, it has to be feasible. So if it is 2, 2, because the utility of agent B will be 4, agent A should be getting the rest of uh, good 1, which is 4, and rest of good 2, which is um, 2. All right? So again, this is feasible because this is 6, this is 4, and the utility of agent A under allocation Y is 4 times 2, 8. And the utility of agent B under Y is 2 times 2, 4. So what happens is that agent A is strictly preferring the allocation A. And agent B is, well, getting exactly the same. So it does satisfy. And one of them is strict. One is strict, remember? So there exists an allocation, a feasible allocation, where mutual gain from trade is actually possible. And hence, uh, thus, uh, the initial endowment is not Pareto efficient. Pareto efficient. Okay? Well, you may wonder, is that how did I come up with this example? Uh, well, is it so obvious? No, it was my lucky guess. Uh, but this is how you should start. Make a guess and then verify, all right? Uh, but I did an educated guess. I just know that I have to keep at least one guy the same level of happiness. And here what I did is, instead of giving them four and one um, and four utility, what about two, two, I, I said, uh, I thought, and then give the others to agent A and voila, uh, I get the result, okay? You would have tried something else. It's like trying to make agent A better off or keep his utility the same and then give agent B higher utility. I mean, you can try that. Um, or you can try to make both agents happier. I don't know. Uh, doesn't matter how you come up with some uh, allocation, but all you have to do is to come up with an allocation where uh, at least one agent is strictly higher utility and the other has the same utility. Once you come up with such an allocation, uh, you can conclude that the allocation uh, W here is uh, not Pareto efficient.